Hello, this is Chanel, and I'm back with the after of my second specimen for unraveling sweaters. This, to recap the before video, was a commercially knit um, Ann Taylor cotton sweater. At least, according to the tag, it was 100% cotton. I did check that with the burn test. I'm going to add in a video here. Again, don't have time to go over the full burn test results, but basically to verify that it's cotton, I just set it on fire. And then as I saw it burn, first it held a sustained burn, which cotton does. And as it burned, oh, I had to blow it out. It wasn't self-extinguishing, though I think the chart said it should have been. It left behind an ashy trail, uh, which crumbled into kind of a brownish, grayish uh, ash. So that was consistent with the behavior of cotton when burning. And actually the smell was also like burned paper because in my test, I also burned some paper on accident, but totally intentionally to have a comparison of the smell of burning paper to the smell of burning cotton. But anyway, definitely cotton. Here is the final yarn. I'm really happy with this. I can't wait to use this. My last time, the last uh, batch of yarn from Unraveling, it wasn't really speaking to me, but this, like, I want a nice drapey transitional top with this yarn. I have some notes down here. In total, in total, I have about 1300 yards um, and about 460 grams after weighing it. I did roughly split up the yarn in two, two, um, into two skeins, but when I joined it for each skein, I did just knot the bits together. And when I end up knitting this, then I'll just undo the knots and uh, deal with the join method. I didn't want to, yeah, I just didn't want to deal with multiple mini skeins. So I just tie them all together. And then when I work it up into a garment, then I will worry about actually joining it nicely. I'm probably just going to leave tails and weave them in like I do. It's not wool, so I can't felt the ends together. If this was wool, I would have felted the mini skeins together as I was winding it up. So I did a bit of math on the weight of this yarn because I couldn't tell outright like what weight it was. It actually looked different when knit up. And then when I unraveled it, I realized that this kind of, it looked like about a sport or DK cotton weight. But also since most of the numbers out there for knitting yarns are for wool, cotton has a very different density when spun compared to wool. So I looked up a chart uh, to convert that that was a rough conversion chart for cotton weaving yarns. If you were to knit with them, what weight they would work up to be. So most of those weaving yarns are measured in terms of grist, which is yards per pound. When I spin, spinners also use yards per pound. But when I spin, I usually convert to yards per gram just because... I measure yards, I measure grams, I divide the yardage by the gram, and it gives me a nice workable number that I can kind of compare. If you're curious, the grist in yards per gram of this yarn was about 2.94, just about three yards per gram. So in total, this was about a pound of yarn, 1300 yards. The grist is 1300 yards per pound. And when I compare that to a chart of weaving yarns, that corresponds to about a three to uh, cotton weaving yarn. If that makes, if that means anything, I know it's so weird how weaving and knitting yarns have such different standards. But anyway, according to that chart, which I will link in the description, that is about a light sport weight of cotton yarn, which is exactly what I guessed. So. Yay, now I have numbers to back up my theory. The structure of this yarn was really interesting. It's actually, if you look closely, it's a very loosely plied collection of two ply threads of 10. It's 10 threads in the yarn. 
And actually, I was wondering if maybe this wasn't plied at all. Maybe it was just 10 cones of yarn held together as it was being knit. I noticed that the pl it, plies individually were really fragile. In fact, when I was washing them, washing the skeins and just kind of wringing out the water, some of the plies did snap. So that means that I'll probably have to, when I come to those, when working with it, I'm just going to have to ditch that segment of the yarn. Otherwise, it's really, well, the structure of it being multiple strands and the cotton makes it really airy and drapey, which is why I want this transitional garment from it. I think um, the original garment was a boat neck, but rather close fitting, ribbed all over. I actually want to kind of re-knit it into a similar piece, but with a wider boat neck, um, maybe a dropped shoulder, and just a, a boxier body. And I think that would be really comfy in a looser gauge too, because when I measured the gauge on the original garment, it was like six or seven stitches per inch, depending on if you stretch the ribbing or not, which is really dense for a sport to DK weight. And the softness of this yarn surprised me as I unraveled it because it had been so densely knitted that I thought it was going to be a much harder feeling yarn. So um, that takes me to washing since I touched upon that. My washing process for this was similar to the last batch with that was acrylic. I did use fairly warm water, also dish soap. The, the original sweater had some stains on it, so I wanted to make sure it really got clean, but I didn't agitate it too much seeing how fragile it was, how fragile the yarn was. I did just, I swirled it around, let it sit, let the sediment sink to the bottom, and then scooped up the yarn, dumped out the water, and did a couple of more rinses of just water before, until I didn't see any uh, soap or just dirt come out. Kind of like washing the fleece. Um, yeah, and then I tried, I gently squeeze out all the yarn. I did, I gently squeeze out all the water. I did wring it a bit. I wasn't worried about that. But then I, I think I, I did end up like trying, like swinging it around a bit to spin out more of the water. That probably broke some more of the plies. But then I just laid it flat to dry. I didn't weight it. That's why it's still a little bit squiggly, but it's still workable. On to some highlights from the unraveling process itself. Like what I learned about the construction of the sweater since this was my first time getting to sit down with a commercial knit and really just dissect it. The first thing that stood that jumped out at me was the seaming technique. Instead of a mattress stitch, they had crochet chained the all the pieces together, which meant that if I found the right end, I could actually unzip the I could actually unzip the seam in one direction. But if I found the wrong direction, then I'd have to really pick it. And which was a pain. So it, I tried to find the the right direction for all the seams. And it was really fun. Makes a lot of sense. I feel like the crochet seam also has a little more, bit more stretch. So I might consider using that in future garment knits. And then the interesting thing was this crochet chain kept showing up because in once I had uh, gotten all the pieces separated, then I started unraveling them. The bind off edge was also crochet chained. Basically, instead of doing your normal bind off where you knit two stitches, you pass the first one over the second one, the knitter had just taken a, um, a separate yarn and just crochet chained through all of the final stitches. You could see the ends of the crochet chain. They did a couple of, they, did a few extra crochet chains and you can kind of just see that as an end woven in. The ends were not well woven in by the way I dug them out really easily. But I did say that a knitter did it. I'm pretty sure that I I was going in with the assumption that oh how much of this is mechanized assuming that a lot of it was done by machines but then I realized and after talking to some people in like production with production experience a lot of this stuff is still manual labor. It's just greatly, tragically underpaid and just exploiting people. So this is probably a machine knitter, a person operating a knitting machine 
and finishing it by hand. My theory, if anyone has any insights to that or wants to give me contrary evidence, please do. I'm really interested in this black box in our society. Okay, and then last highlight from the structure of this was the cast-on. So it was a tubular cast-on. So I'm, yeah, in my sweater pattern, I totally wrote a line about like, you should do the tubular cast-on. It's still, well, tubular bind-off, but tubular cast-on does achieves the same effect. I'm like, it's totally worth it. It's all tubular. It's totally worth it. It's worth the trouble. It totally is because it gives you that nice professional look. All right. So I learned a lot from unraveling this and it just gives me a lot more questions about the garment industry and their production process. So you can look forward to something from this yarn, hopefully. And I will have even more uh, commercially knit garments to unravel in the future. See you next time.